Good afternoon, sir, and welcome to the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority uh, Office in Lagos. Good chairman, uh, I would like to thank you, first and foremost, on behalf of the authority for the letter of consideration and uh, prayers for the loss of our past, immediate past, between my predecessor, he was my big brother and a good friend, and we've been together for four years. So please, uh, with your kind per permission, I'd like to seek uh, your indulgence for us to take one minute silence so that we can operate for the working of this. Uh, March this year. That was just beginning of the COVID pandemic. Uh, in fact, I uh, remember the first meeting I had as the DJ sitting in this, we started discussing the COVID pandemic and how we will ensure NCA continues functioning, business continuity with the pandemic close at the front. And we decided to look at essential staff. We started working on having essential staff that will be a bit to ensure there's a continuity in the system in case the pandemic got worse. And eventually it got worse, luckily we had made that argument. So that really helped us and the uh, industry uh, to keep going. And sometime shortly afterwards, the uh, industry started shutting down. And the airlines started stopping operations before the government st stepped in and shut down the industry as to mitigate and prevent further spread of the uh, uh, virus among the Nigerian population. So right after that, we started working on the restart of the industry. We were well ahead of the curve. We didn't want to wait for government or anybody to tell us. We started working. And in fact, uh, it is uh, great on a formidable IQ. We did our document before IQ. When we did a document, we shared it with IQ, we shared it with the African Civil Liberation Commission for their review and feedback, and they had minor, minor corrections addition they had got. That was an in-house thing. In fact, finally, when IQ document came out, what they had was like 90% in alignment with what we had done in-house. In fact, at one time, I was kidding that IQ stole our document and expanded it and improved it. Those who had like 90%. And that really helped the industry during our restart. We had all the protocols, the health protocols, the safety protocols, and others. The health protocols, we developed it and shared it and, uh, with the public health authorities led by the uh, Federal Ministry of Health, the uh, Center for Disease Control, uh, the National Center of uh, Disease Control, and also with the public health services so that we ensure that whatever we did was in compliance with it and we did that and thankfully we could still go to the airports today that is largely compliance with this protocol and at this point I would really like to thank their fund they have done very well in that to ensure that those protocols and guidelines we give them are still being uh, implemented yes we have cases here and there of non-compliance but generally uh, it's been very good. Uh, the pandemic really shut, uh, didn't let us do what we wanted to do over here. But after the opening, we started uh, doing uh, going back to normal business. We are still going to. And one of the first things we did uh, a bit with the uh, approval of the ministry and working together with the ministry, we restructured this year from uh, nine directorates to six directorates to make us a more flexible, a more agile, and a more resilient organization to be able to react and deal with the issues and the challenges uh, of the industry. And that has been uh, working uh, very well for us. Uh, now we're able to respond faster. We're able to coordinate our activities much better. And we're able to develop uh, strategies and uh, guidance for the future of planning. Uh, and part of the uh, 
restructuring, we are looking at our regional offices. We have about five regional offices now. We want to empower them, give them more powers, give them more authority to do their jobs because they are uh, closer to the operators outside Lagos and Abuja. And in addition to that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe I might have spoken to, we are even looking at the next one year or two or hopefully more regional offices and far flung corners of the country. I'll uh, give you an example, sir. In, uh, we have one regional office in Bahabat. I take care of New York, Bahabat, Enugu, Oweri, and airports around there, which I think we need maybe one or two more regional offices there so that we have more better coverage and more effective uh, oversight. Also, Kano takes care of Medigree. You can imagine the distance. We need to have someone, another in Medigree or Yola, then another in Dila, Sokutu, or Kebi, and in the middle class, maybe in Lauren. We really want to more effectively cover all over uh, all the countries so that uh, our presence are felt by all operators, not necessarily only Lagos and uh, Abuja, but all, uh, all over the country. So that's part of the uh, restructuring. Uh, another, we, uh, so during the discussion uh, on the uh, Civil Division uh, Act, I'd like to thank you very much, sir, and the members of the committee for very robust and honest and open discussions. Sometimes it, will, it fled off a little bit, which is the operators uh, and us, but other, under your guidance, uh, our chairman, we are able to I believe we're able to have a very good understanding between uh, all the uh, different subjects of the industry, including the agencies and the uh, private operators, and the need to work together. And we are carrying under your guidance, we are carrying on the, that uh, uh, agreement that we had, gentlemen's agreement, where it has in it. And we've been having a meeting with the operators, we've had meeting with the operators on the issue of the debt collection. And the Honorable Chairman, we agreed with the operators on that area are willing to quit, so we are going to notify them each island on the level of debt they have. We'll sit down with them, we'll do reconciliation. When we do reconciliation with them, we'll do a payment plan. We do not expect all of them to pay all their money at the go because of the difficulties the industry is facing due to the uh, COVID pandemic and also the economic downturn. But we'll put in a payment plan that is a win-win for all parties involved in this. As part of the promise we made to you to work together with the, uh, with the, with the industry, especially the airlines. And we'll continue on that. And uh, even individual islands will have meetings with them. Whatever issues they have, difficulties, we sit down with them and find solutions. We, I don't want to see us as a policeman of the industries. No, we are partners and friends of progress. We need to work together with them to get over the difficult challenges so that they will grow and provide better, much better services all over the country. And in fact, have them with the uh, international operations to be doing international. So that's the spirit we are working on going forward. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you said if we have anything that we disagree, when we come to the National Assembly, you do the details. And whenever that comes, I promise you, will uh, involve your good offices to help us. Um, but I hope and I pray, and uh, from the look of this, whatever issues we have, we are able to resolve them. Through from uh, being open, uh, being open, being transparent, and being uh, friendly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the uh, NCA, being a regulatory body, we do not have much uh, projects like FAN, uh, much capital projects like FAN or NAMA, who are expected to build airports or buy equipment and all that. Our own one of our major uh, cost driver is training for our staff. We have a uh, combination of local and foreign training. Since we are to oversight the industry, including Fan Nama, uh, INCAT, the industry, uh, my inspectors have to know better. 
or at least have the same knowledge for us to be able to oversight them uh, effectively. So training, we we'll do training, and we we'll do we we'll do training because training uh, is continuous. Training uh, is recurrent because the industry is not stagnant. The industry keeps growing, things keep changing, especially in times in times of ICT. The change is continuous. So we have to keep training. Uh, inspectors for the aircraft, for the flight of coaches, and this we keep training and training and training. And uh, also, in addition to the training, we need to provide work tools for our staff, especially the instructors in the flight operations, in the air wilderness, in the aerodrome and uh, airspace uh, standards, uh, such as uh, computers, uh, telecommunication gadgets, and other things. And these things, uh, after four years, they are replaced. Because, as we know, computers, the lifespan of a computer is very short. You have a computer now, after one year, it's different. And also, with the new programs we have and the rapid change in ICTs, computers are all them, uh, more than one year old, but not necessarily be able to, to deal with our own development. We have new portals, we have new uh, apps, and new tools that we need to work with. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have our corporate headquarters in Uja. Uh, the building has been ongoing. Hopefully, by end of uh, first quarter of next year, by the grace of the Almighty, we'll move in, uh, into that office. And uh, that is really, really going to help us to improve the efficiency of the organization because now we're basically split between Lagos and Abuja, and sometimes what we can do in one or two hours and it take us one or two days moving documents from one point uh, to another. So once that comes in, it's really, really uh, going to help us uh, enhance our efficiency. I will have more office space because some people from Lagos will move to Abuja. Not everybody is moving from Lagos to Abuja. And what we are going to do, in the, uh, I spoke about in the regional office, we look at the integration activities in each regional office. Obviously, Lagos will be the, is the biggest center of uh, operations. We will ensure that they have more than adequate manpower, equipment, and whatever is necessary for them to do the effective oversight in Lagos. Abuja will be the same thing, Kotaka the same thing, Kano the same thing. All regional office will make sure they have more than adequate personnel, management, and staff, uh, field staff, and equipment operational vehicles, whatever they need to do their effective oversight. That is part of our our uh, agenda going forward with uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, another one of another major cost of uh, uh, cost drivers is operational vehicles. Of course, we need inspectors to go all over. Even in Lagos, we need inspectors to go to the local rock. We need them to go to international centers with the security uh, find security to go around to inspect things. And you have regional offices like Patapot, you must have mode of transportation between the headquarters and their areas of jurisdiction so that they ensure they have an oversight uh, there. So uh, issue of operational vehicles is a, is a, uh, is a big thing for us. Uh, we uh, have made substantive contribution as part of the extent regulations, uh, financial regulations in India uh, to the government. And in addition to that, uh, another major component of our expenses is our staff salary. Because we, need, we not only need to We need, we need only need to employ and train our staff, but we must be able to retain them. We are in direct competition with uh, the operators for staff. We we'll have to hire pilots and we we'll have to ensure that we give them a good package that they will stay on work with us rather than quitting and going to the islands and getting more a better uh, employment package for the engineers and also a lot of other of our staff. So we are in competition in terms of staff with the industry who are oversighted. So we need to really give them 
a reasonable good package to uh, to retain them. That's a global problem. It's not only in Nigeria. It's, it's, it's everywhere in the world. The uh, civil aviation authorities, they employ people, they train them, and they just say thank you, bye bye. They go and work for the private operators because the industry uh, gives them better uh, conditions of service. So we try within our own limits. We cannot match them, but we try to see how much we can reduce the gap within uh, the extent of regulation, existing regulations in Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, on the issue of the Civil Aviation Act, as I thank you and your committee for the robust discussion. Once that act is passed and signed by the National Assembly and signed into law by Mr. President, uh, the next stage Next thing we plan to do is a review of our regulations. And when we review, when we review our regulations, we send what we call the notice of proposed rulemaking to the industry. And we don't change the regulations and I will know we sit down with all stakeholders and look at all our regulations covering all areas. Because these regulations have been in place for, uh, for a while and the industry has changed. And uh, some of the major complaints by the industry, even during the Civil Aviation Act, was not the Civil Aviation Act itself, was regulatory in nature. So we really need to sit down with them, look at these regulations, we review, and put the things in place that are practical, that will ensure the safety, security, environmentally friendly uh, operation of the industry, and importantly, efficiency for the survival of the airlines and uh, other operators uh, in the industry. And then after that, I uh, will propose uh, another, and uh, certainly the initial assemblies that will be involved. I want to sit down and look at the we can do a strategic vision for Nigeria. Why do we want our aviation industry to be in the next 10 years? Why do you want it to be in the next 20 years? So I can look at the roadmap of the government that uh, the president has put as espoused by the Honorable Minister and see if all this is in place. Why, why do we project to be in the next 10 years or the next year? That will help us, even as a regulatory body, to know what the requirements we need to do to continue the attractive oversight. It will help NAMA also, so that they can plan. It will help fun. It will help everybody. We know the industry is going to be, in 10 years, it's going to be this. So we plan, okay, what do we need to do to continue this attractive uh, oversight of the industry? over this proposed growth over the next 10 years. Help us to plan for employment, for training, capacity building, facilities and everything so that you can show that uh, you will have a much more effective. And presently, uh, aviation in Nigeria contributes only 0.6% of the GDP, which is even for many African countries is on the low side. And uh, the ministries, uh, uh, thought is we can effectively grow this to at least 5% in the next 5 to 10 years, which will bring significant growth of the industry and also bring uh, employment, uh, create more businesses, uh, provide better services uh, for the uh, industry. And uh, we as a regulator will have a critical role to play in that. That's why we need this uh, strategic vision, this uh, a roadmap for 10, 15 years down the road. So we, knew, we need to know what uh, our responsibilities are. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, at this time I will uh, uh, to slow down. I could go on forever <laughs> trying to explain why on the same time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me use this uh, medium to join the uh, MD, the uh, Let me use this medium to join the city of NCA, the commissariate of the family of uh, Dr. Muta. He was a uh, work uh, closely, but not long. It was just brief because before we left and an acting uh, MD replaced him. Acting MD replaced him. It was a very nice 
successful to the best of my knowledge. And uh, it's good that uh, for the both of you there. So, well, um, we're here. This is a part of our oversight. Uh, oversight is uh, one of the functions, part of uh, our legislative uh, functions. Especially in areas when there is a budget, budget presentation, and uh, before the passage of the budget, we we'll have to come back and look at what we are doing with the, with the, with the, what we are doing with the money released to you, and also what we intend to do. Now we are coming with your idea. We also need to know what you have done before and what you are doing. That's the, that's the key you know, of uh, our visit. And uh, importantly, to the, I must commend the uh, uh, Captain uh, Nobu. So far, so good. Because um, I believe that your experience when you were in Akau is also helping you. Because uh, Akau and uh, SCAA, they work almost like the same. So the experience you have in Akau can also help you to do well in the uh, SCAA. I also want to commend you because of your quick intervention and daily participation and activity during the COVID-19. You were you were all over the place, you played a major role. As a matter of fact, you came out with one of the best in terms of handling. Uh, so I must commend you as the management of the uh, agency. SCA is a very critical uh, agency in the sector. Very physical in the sense that it's a regulator. The regulator is like the police of the agency. But I'm also glad that you said I don't want to act as a policeman. I want to be a friend to you. want to be more like a friend. It was important that that's what I recall when we were small. You know, most people have problems with mass, mass teachers. Not because the mass is difficult, but because of the attitude of the teachers. So the teachers care the students. And once the teachers care the students, the students will be reluctant to even learn the basic skills. So once an uh, DG of NCAA, it is hostile to the airline operators and other sectors in the then they will not they will be they want to cut corners because they will they won't be comfortable to open up. To their, to the difficulties they are having at all. So I must commend you for what you said. We as a, we've been busy for the past uh, weeks. We started with the concession, meeting of concession. From there we moved on to the public hearing, from public hearing to budget. So we've been busy. And uh, we'll continue to, to support the industry to the best of our capacity. We continue to make sure that in our tenure in the aviation committee that will come out with one of the best. That is our position. And um, whatever, like we said, whatever you think that we can do to enhance that stay here, we are open, we are going to support. Like we, like, like we will continue to say, we are not in the committee to be hostile to the agencies under uh, aviation. We are, we are more like they love it for the industry. We are more like people that will help the industry push for the industry in the parliament. Whatever that is needed for us to do, once we agree that this is what we need to do, they will push it in the parliament. That's what we are what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be aggressive to the agencies in the aviation sector. But that's not what we are here for. So we'll continue to dialogue and we we'll continue to listen together to move the industry forward. I must thank you for, for all the things you have been doing here and also want to encourage you to continue to do more because the industry will rely on the, the SCAA to survive. Thank you for, for receiving us and we pray that all our relationship will continue to be positive. Thank you very much. We have offices scattered around Nigeria.
wherever you are, to give you all the resources you need to function as an inspector or a safe, um, to carry out your duties wherever you are. So uh, we leverage a lot on ICT in NCA, and the management has committed a lot of resources to, to this regard. So basically, I'll talk about the fiscal infrastructure, the virtual infrastructure, our applications. So the fiscal infrastructure. One of the first things that we did when we started this turnkey project was to build a metropolitan area network in this Morutaba Mohamed airport. By far, I, I call this a gift to the airport. We are able to connect more than 20 different lands. What we are trying to do is this. With, with this 24 core fiber, I boast to say now that any building in this airport, maximum, that's not connected, maximum 50 meters, you can be hooked up to this uh, metropolitan fiber. All our buildings in Lagos, Kota, Kano, and Kaduna, we're able to install uh, over 140 network nodes. And we have uh, a Cisco wireless architect, Kano, or I mean, my office at the annex. I do not need any other sign on. Once I'm registered on the network, I just seem, 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 seamlessly connected. At our Buja office, the, the, the new headquarters complex, we, we already have 539 network nodes waiting to be installed as soon as the building is commissioned. Um, that should go to about a thousand nodes when the regional office and the DG's block is also connected. So we're expected to have another 1,000 nodes of network in Abuja. Because, uh, just that, I think there's an example here. This is a video phone that we are having in Abuja but yet to be activated. With this phone, you, you can securely um, talk to anybody in NCA. It's touch screen. With it, uh, you can also call other agencies in the government cloud because it's, 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 a, it's a cloud based technology. Like I've had calls from the Navy, from the Air Force. Anybody that is hooked up to the government cloud, you can make a call. We talk to our future regularly on it. So that, that's the unified um, um, communication. Right now, I can call Kano, I can call Kaduna. I can call any office around the airport here in, in Lagos. I can even call AID because they are on this platform too. There's one just downstairs. We need a lot of upgrades. We provided precision cooling, power and fire systems, raised floor, budget. Uh, this currently, the one in Lagos is the naval center of the network nationwide. But by the time the data center in Abuja becomes operational, that will take over. Abuja will now be the the, north, the network operating center for the data centers. Okay. What you see here, we have another one at our office in Annex. We have one in, one in Abuja is still in storage because uh, the office is still under construction. So we can actually do video conferencing. We can have a meeting. I can tell Kano now to call in. I can tell them in Annex to call in. Uh, but, uh, but today is Wednesday. You can only do point-to-point -point call on Wednesdays because of the of the um, um, FEC meeting. The, 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 for security reasons, so that nobody hacks into the FEC meeting, you cannot do conference on this government platform on the Wednesday. This is one of the things we are implementing right now. Like my DJ said, here we generate a lot of regulations. And when it's, as long as it's paper-based, getting it accessible to people all over the country. This EDMS, our work here is to digitize all our documents. We have the first EDMS center now in, at the annex. It's in time for me to come and visit it. The, the aim here is to convert all our documents electronically and make it accessible to every inspector, every NCA staff, any authorized persons that, we, that have to have access to any of the documents. So this is the, this is it. These are the shelves for, for, for paper that you, that you have archived if you want to still keep them. Okay, virtual infrastructure. Now, by virtual, I mean things that are not physically located here. We realize that an aligned modern technology, technology to be able to access our infrastructure like everywhere, the best, the best um, technology is to go cloud. So all our things, all our documents, all our files, everything is domiciled in the government cloud. Government cloud in Nigeria, by law, we are not to take them out, out, out offshore. So they are in the government cloud in Nigeria, just about the most secure um, facility in Nigeria right now. Uh, 
and there's a backup. If anything should happen, there's a backup in the Enugu. If anything should happen to uh, all, our, uh, all our data, there's a backup in the Enugu. The, the government cloud now is resided is some of the some of the portals, some of the things that generate all our um, documents right now. NCA website is, is very big because it holds all our regulations. The civil aviation, everything is on the website. The website is, is quite uh, a, a, uh, we call it a content document management system. It's literally a big library. The, the HR portal, everything about NCA personnel. The FSG portal, this is a portal that has the tools for the safety inspectors. This is where they report their daily operations, everything. RPAS, this is for remote piloting system, that's drones. And our web mail. Here, everybody's on the government mail. It's something that is mandatory. You cannot send any document outside um, mm -hmm. the government mail. The right network is cloud based, it's not physical. That is why we can connect to Kano, we can connect to Kaduna, Abuja and Portacot are next in line. Applications and solutions. I just talked about the flights of the FSG, FSG portal. This is a very useful resource portal. Every NCA they have access to this uh, um, portal. This is where um, uh, every staff has a page. Any communicate, any newsletter is published here. In fact, since 2000, the, HR, the 2008 February, we have not printed a physical payslip. Every staff goes to and temperature sign on. Uh, because of the COVID, we initially it was the biometric sign on when you come to work. Now we are, we are, we are jettisoning that we are going for facial and recognition sign on. It's going to be added to this uh, portal. Network security. Apart from the security being provided by our cloud providers, NCA has also spent good money to make sure our network is secure. Um, we have um, 100,000 loads of licensed antivirus. Every year we pay a lot for this. We've acquired three checkpoint devices to provide perimeter fencing against internal and external threats. So, uh, first of all, we are in the government cloud that is well protected. We also have our own internal protection so that, uh, to guide, to protect our documents. Digital presence. Physically, right now, we are in Lagos. That's the, where you see ICT activities in NCA offices. We are in Lagos, we are in Kano, we are in Kaduna, we are in Abuja, we are in Portacol. We are in more than these places because we are also mandated to provide internet tokens for wait, small. Wait, 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 wait. You are in Lagos? Yes. You are in Kano? Yes. Okay, so that is the reason why so we are going to expand our regional offices. If you recall, I mentioned we have one regional office in Potapa, so it takes care of New York, it takes care of Calabar, it takes care of Mugwari, it takes care of Inigo. And that is the reason why so we are planning and we are going to expand so that we are there each and every room and corner of Nigeria. And the priority is that. Thank you. Do you have two regional offices in Northwest? Yes, there is. It's Kano Regional Office. It's Kaduna Regional Office. I have one. That's where we made the uh, place, and that's where we are trying to rectify. I think I mentioned to you, we discussed, we have one in Enugu being an international airport, and we have another one in either Uyo or Calabar. So to ensure that each and every part of the country is covered. That's why I mentioned that. Uh, that is what we are putting in place uh, to correct this. Uh, I represent it to ensure each and every place is covered. I, uh, that's all I can do to correct what I've seen on the And uh, I hope, I'm sure uh, the National Assembly one will come with a budget for those who will help us approve it so that that can be done as soon as possible. So. Why can't you put the new one?
right now, even at Enugu, we have our own is always on pipeline. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Yes, exactly. Okay, like I said, virtually, um, virtually, because of our migration to the cloud, we have services everywhere. Um, let me see. Don't worry, don't worry. Just look at it. It will be corrected. Yes. Um, the second part is virtually, because of our migration to the cloud, we have services everywhere. So there are some airports that we have little presence, like um, Akure, Benin, Uriri. We give them um, um, internet dongles so that they can they, they send their reports developing a new ICT policy document in line with international best practice to guide service delivery and another procedure we have here SA is constantly engaged in manpower development towards achieving its corporate goals it's one thing to have all this infrastructure and do not have the power the people to manage to use it and to sustain it so that second um, point is very important. The ICT roadmap. Okay, this is first Abuja. These are the plans we have for our Abuja corporate head headquarters. It's going to be a smart office, facial recognition, access control, smart internet, wired and wireless, unified communication, high definition video conferencing, local and international. Then the data center will become the national op uh, operating center. The EDMS center will also become the national operating center. This is the ICT roadmap. For Portacourt office, full integration, we are step by 20 in, uh, with, with all the all the facilities. Then um, in 2020, we also expect that all our uh, all our portals will have app versions of them so that you can access them from your phone. Then we expect full digital presence. So this is by 2024. We expect to have attained um, full national coverage. This roadmap is based on appropriation, resources, as the authority gets money. These are some of the things we intend to do, to cover the whole uh, where we have operations. So we expect full digital presence by 2024. We expect to, complete, to have completed uh, digitalizing all our processes by 2025. Nationwide, um, national um, facial recognition in all our premises by 2025. Smart internet by 2022. Unified communication 2022. This same um, um, uh, video conferencing facility, or even a better one, we were expected to be in all our offices by um, 2022. EDMS, nationwide services by 2023. ICT simulation and training lab. We intend to build um, a, an ICT training center where all our technologies will be taught to staff so that they will know how to use it and implement it irrespective of where they are. So we expect this lab to be in place by 2021. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the issue is the full digital presence. We expect to do a full coverage based on appropriation and resources by 2024. <laughs> <laughs> this particular one we are expecting. No, this is the plan we have. We've been following the plan. That one is 2024. Yes. <laughs> Don't expect our own. We're going to do it. Let it follow that, please. Our own shouldn't go on voicemail. Put it there. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Member. Thank you very much. Uh, if I don't fall under the purview of uh, Lagos, we can have and Lagos, whatever. If I don't implement it, goes under the Lagos uh, regional office. We can have, we cannot have regional offices in every airport. So, so you have a canoe and canoe, you know, close? Sir, uh, I, I think I mentioned we'll find this. No, no, I can't resolve an issue. I cannot. You inherited it. Then. Sir, I inherited I cannot, I cannot flip my finger and uh, the problem. We have recognized it and we are working on, on resolving it. Uh, before even uh, Mr. Chairman read this issue, I mentioned it. We are going to have more regional office to ensure each and every corner of the country is effectively covered. And for me, the reason for that, sir, I want 
ACA to be closer to the operators in each and every regional office to ensure our services are taught across the country standard-wise. It's the same quality at the same level, and ICT is one of the drivers that will, uh, that will uh, uh, assist us in achieving this standardization and the same uh, level of quality of service. Please bear with us. We are working on it. What we are saying, what we are saying is in each geopolitical zone, at least we will be able to get one at least it is over the geopolitical zone. Especially now we that we are in not yet, we don't have any. At least we suppose to be yes. Not west they have two. Not is not not central. Thank you, sir. I mentioned. I mentioned. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Honorable Vice Chair. I did mention that uh, we are going to have one in either Yola or Madibu. We are going to have one in either Uyo or Kalama. We are going to have one in either Oweri or Inibu, but I think that one is going to be Inibu because Inibu is an international airport, so I think it deserves to have it. As uh, I also want to plead with you, we will do this. We identified it on our own before it was even brought up. We are working on it, but we have limited resources. We cannot flip our fingers and do it over now, but I can guarantee you and the shortest time possible, but also with the help of this committee in approving our request to resolve all this. Thank you very much.